come to save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems, home improvement problems, that is, and for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, you can join us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Periscope Live right now, brought to you in part by Mr. Floor. And wherever you're watching, you can click on the like button, hit subscribe. So be notified when we hit the air. Podcasts of all our shows are available at MightyHouse.net, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and on HomeApprovementUSA.com. Find links to all of them at MightyHouse.net. And uh, we've got a special two-part series for you that we're going to start today. And uh, what are we going to be talking about there, Rich? Uh, We're going to talk about tile, layout, installation, a lot of things. like this right here, like this tile. That's why, that's why uh, sonar. Yeah. Uh, with the fuzzy with the wall put us in the shower. Today. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, <laughs> last week we were talking. We were tools, and we were we gave away. We were giving away this this Klein twenty five foot tape measure, and it is magnetic on the tip. Yay! It's very irritating when you walk by some some conduit or something, and all of a sudden your tape just starts spooling out like this. <laughs> And it's, you're walking away and it's unspooling. So, uh, but anyway, we, we do have, have a problem with Romex. <laughs> yeah, if you're running Romex, you're fine. Um, but the the deal was you had to send Robbie an email saying you wanted the, the tape. And then mm-hmm. she was going to have a drawing off, off of those. So you drew right before we went on the air here. And Yes, I did. Who wins? Who wins? William Settles. William Settles. William Settles. Excellent. Congratulations. There you go, William. Uh, That's a fine 25-foot yep. tape measure. There you go. And uh, we'll get this out in the mail to you next week. And if uh, you have his address and stuff already? No, Robbie? but if he's listening, he will email me and we will get it. Yep, we will uh, email, him back. email him back. And I want to thank so, Klein Tools for some great tools yep. and helping us out. Check these out right here. Some left-handed lineman's pliers, iron workers' pliers, left-handed. <laughs> so there you go. Well, we got those to give away. We've also got this. Can't you just turn a regular lineman. pair over? I get me thinking. Well, if you're <laughs> holding it this way, the cutter's on this side. If I turn them <laughs> over, the cutter's on that side. <laughs> now, a, 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 a smart person might go, "Hey." That what's the difference? But I'm gonna I'm gonna come around the the, the workbench here and you see right here this little right there you see uh-huh. that little kick right there see how that fits in your left hand and, and if it, if you put it right it'll, it'll fit in your right hand but then this, the the cutter's on the wrong side so now you see it's backwards when you do it this way so by making them left handed and like that. See, that's that's the proper way to do that. You Why see how is that there a right works? side and a wrong side for the cutter to be on? Leverage. Well, when you're cutting, you want the cutter edge on this side, and on this side it wouldn't be there. So that's because I'm holding it with my left hand. So Klein Tools sent us that. We're going to have to give that away at some point. And uh, we've also got this Klein Tool digital angle Electronic and Electronic double level. bubbleometer. It's, yes. It's a bubbleometer? Correct. It's a digital well, bubble. Didn't, that have, didn't that have my name on it, Ron Cowgill? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe no, it was you're... addressed to me. It was. It was addressed to you, but I picked it up. You're exempt from the prize closet. That's right. So the Klein Tool part prize closet. Okay. Well, you'll have you'll have to work on that. So yeah, thanks to Klein Tool an email for email and see out. if you win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There we go. All right. So we're going to talk tile today and uh, tile layout installation. This is a two-part series. And uh, why don't you kick us off here, Rich? Well, let's start with something simple like backer boards. So, you know, everybody, you want to tile your, your bathroom or even underlayment for a floor. Uh, you know, the, the old school was green board. And I think most of us got away from green board, which is just a water resistant gypsum. And I see yep. you went shopping in the van and found some scraps. <laughs> Back in the shop, yes. Yep. <laughs> Cut the corner so off of a perfect good piece. <laughs> nice. 
And that stuff is fairly useless. Um, it's best to use it like a, a drywall for walls and ceilings in a bathroom, but not in the shower or tub area. And the color of this green board matches Robbie's wall there pretty good too, I think. Look at that. Very yes. nice. It, it's the same color Lovely. green. Okay. So that, that's the green board versus the standard. Yeah, and standard drywall would offer no moisture protection. Correct. So not a good choice for tile backer. However, back no. that up. If it was in your kitchen, it really doesn't matter. Correct. You know, I mean, unless you tend to spray your walls down often in your kitchen. But <laughs> otherwise. So when what's the name of the stuff we should use? Well, so now we go to cementitious panels, which are, uh, you know, any of your hardy backing, but any cement based is really good. Um, I, that's my preference. You can see that it's co uh, concrete met and it's between two layers of fiberglass. And Oops, that, sorry, I smacked in the head there. I apologize. Yeah. So <laughs> the reason I like that is because you can literally soak that in water and it won't be harmed. I mean, it just, it might absorb water, but it's non-organic, so it doesn't mold, mildew, or fall apart. And then, yes, Robbie. I know what Hardy board is. It's James Hardy. Correct. No, that's different. Same company, different product. Right. But is it Hardy, H-A-R-D-I-E? They yeah. do I'm make just, one. I just want yeah, people to know it's not Hardy, H-E-A-R-T-Y. <laughs> So no. when they're shopping for it, they know what they're shopping for. Yes. Right. And uh, there, there's several manufacturers of, of the Dura-Rock type system, um, but any, any of those will work really well. Dura-Rock Dura is another brand. So the Hardy tends right. to be a compressed concrete. Dura-Rock tends to be the, the fiberglass mesh. So they're heavier, harder to work with uh, than some of the other. There's a gypsum product out there with the plastic on the front and back, and I really mm -hmm. hate that stuff because... The gypsum is not waterproof at all. The plastic is fine. So you put screws in it, cut holes for maybe plumbing fixtures. So again, don't recommend yep. that. Probably Robbie, the top the of the line. Robbie, the, the Hardy you're talking about, they solve mysteries. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can mystery. we give the mystery she away comes to on anybody who knows the names of the two Hardy boys? <laughs> if you want. If, they... you have them call in before the end. Well, yeah, they yeah. have to call in. Right. It's all Robbie rules anyway. Right. There you go. So what what's your what's the what's the uh the last so, top you, of the line cream of the crop? Yeah, the top of the line, the probably the best way to build a shower uh with benches, seats, or a tub deck is with rigid foam panels. And again, there's a couple of different brands out there. Um that does not look is that Schluter? That looks like Dense yep. Field. Oh, that is Schluter, yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, it, it's even on the, I even picked a piece that actually has the the name on it. Oh, there. ready board. Yes. The Schluter, www.schluter.com. Okay. So that stuff is impervious to water. Uh, it's easy to cut. You see, it's got the grid layout, so it makes it easier to lay out your tile. You get that squared level. Uh, and then the other thing you want to do is tape all your seams. You can roll on, uh, you, can, you know, we'll talk about the waterproofing and stuff in a little bit. That does tend to be fairly expensive though. I mean, so if you're yep. handy and you can deal with the concrete board and do a liquid applied waterproofer, you're fine. But Schluter is a, it is a great product. I mean, it never say anything bad. It's just, if you're on a budget, it might not be what, you may not be able to afford it. Is this on your list here? Because it's, just, it's under the waterproofing. Oh, this is the waterproofing membrane. membrane. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk real quick. So those are your basic backers. Um, the big key with the backers is to actually install them with screws, not nails. Um, the yep. other thing is don't use regular screws or drywall screws because phosphate coated drywall screws will start rusting. And if you're putting up marble, you'll get nice brown circles through your marble wherever you have a screw. Not overnight, yep. or but you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in in a year or two it'll happen. So Durarock, uh, is one of the manufacturers, actually makes their own screws for that to secure that to the wall and the floor. So we try to use those Durarock screws when we're 
uh, actually installing the product. It works a lot better that way. They have, they have a very big bugle head and they have a little countersink yep. nub on them. So they, they do set flatter and hold tighter. So they're truly designed for that product. I agree. Yep. So let's talk a little about setting materials. All right. Say we got our wall up. Say we're going with Dura Rock or Schluter because that's really the only two things I would prefer to use. So our setting materials, the first one that you can buy out of the bucket is a mastic. And mastic yes. was more what you used to see, those little plastic four by four tiles in your shower, the old days. That was a mastic and that was usually put over green board. So now you got all three of us are doing it. That's cool. Huh? Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> mastic is organic and it's a water-based product. So you have two issues. One, when water gets behind your tile, it can dissolve that mastic and it yep. can mold and mildew and that will just keep growing. So you keep getting mold and mildew in your shower. It could be the mastic rotting behind it. And then the third problem with mastic is because it's water-based, it will not stick to a waterproof membrane. Oh, so see, I've never tried that, but that makes sense. Yeah, I know this, I did it once. <laughs> that's how you know <laughs> that's the, yes we did the test i can tell you right it does not work that was many years ago but it's amazing how you learn things right i found a way oh, yeah. it doesn't work so thin set is probably your most recognized type setting material which is a bag you can buy it in bag or pre-mix but i usually buy the you know 50 pound bags you can mix it uh if it's with just water if it's a modified or a thin set or a full flex, well, those are modified where they already have latex powder in them. If you're buying a standard uh, mix of thin set that is not latex modified, then you may want to mix it with the latex additive, and that's a better bonding agent then. Right. Just saying. And, and thin set, uh, I mean, that's pretty much exclusively what we'll use. Even if we're just doing a kitchen backsplash, we're still using thin set. Just to... Uh, make sure that everything bonds properly to it. So um, it, it seems to be overall, it's a better product. You don't have to worry about the moisture barrier and, you know, and uh, moisture getting to the mastic and starting to dissolve the mastic. And then all of a sudden the tiles start to pop, the grout's cracking and you start getting right. a whole bunch of issues. So, and, and we didn't really even talk about that. We can go back, let's lay a little bit just to backer boards, but like for floor tile using a uh, separating membrane. So again, mm -hmm. Schluter, the Ditra, the Schluter Ditra is a decoupling membrane and it's made to be mm -hmm. thin set to your floor and then you thin set your tile over and it's got a waffle pattern on it and it literally is made for the floor to separate from the subfloor and almost be, it's not going to float like an inch up. It's not going to do that. But if the lower level moves or if it was a concrete slab and it cracks, it will not telegraph through. It does a great job of, so again, a good product. Uh, there's a couple other manufacturers with similar products that maybe not as expensive but that we've used i have it right here through my floor <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and it works yep. and, and yeah. the other thing you can do is just you can uh thin set and and screw down this half inch dura rock as a substrate for your t floor tile also so yeah. you know if you don't want to use a decoupling membrane you can do this put your dura rock down do a thin set uh, bed and you slap it down there and then start screwing it into place and that'll help bond the whole thing together and give you a really good solid floor something you can tile to yeah and that's the way you always did you mix your thin set like real watery and you just pour it over mm -hmm. the floor and you slap your sheets of dura rock on top of that and like you said when you screw it down once that thin set cures you'd feel like you're walking on a two inch concrete slab it bonds everything together that tight so very good way to do yes. floor tile yeah make right, sure so that if you have holes in your subfloor that it Whatever's uh -huh. in your basement can get mortar on it. <laughs> That's right. Make sure it doesn't drip all the way through. Now, I went to the yep. clear glass because the green one kept disappearing. What's this? Oh, you're new. you've got My a new green water glass cup. kept disappearing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have a different water cup because I'd hold it up and it would go green screen on me. So it was weird. <laughs> anyway, so one last thing with thin set, it commonly comes in two colors, white and gray. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, you choose that based on what you're setting. If it's porcelain, uh, ceramic, anything like that, the gray is fine. If you're doing a white marble or something like that, you always use the white. Actually, almost all stones, you should use the white. And it's really just, again, yep. so that it doesn't bleed or transmit through that stone because natural stone is more porous. Right. And that the grays will show through. So if you have, a, if you have that on the back, if you started with gray, 
and then you went to white and you were putting down uh, white career marble, you're going to see where you stopped with the gray and started with the white. And it's, mm -hmm. it's going to show up in a floor, your walls, anywhere. So um, we exclusively just buy white and always use white, and that way we don't need to worry about it. I pretty much do, I, but the white costs it $2 more. It's two bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have it in stock, sitting in the shop, ready to go. Right. The guys come in, they can grab a bag and go. They don't have to worry about it. Uh, so another cool one is for like doing your kitchen backsplashes. As you said, you like to use thin set even on a backsplash, but in a kitchen mm -hmm. that may be smaller and already really finished, you know, granite countertops on, you can buy double sided tape. It comes in sheets, usually two foot by five foot. And you literally yeah. stick it to the wall and then stick your tile to the adhesive tape and then you grout it. You can do now, a tile in a day with a lot less mess. You've done this before. I'm yes, afraid. I used to. it once. It, again, <laughs> if the house is not moving, it doesn't go anywhere. The more the grout will lock it together. It's actually for somebody who doesn't that isn't comfortable mixing mortar and trying to mortar up side walls and all that. It's great, but you got to lay it right the first to try time. It, Ron. Ron, why are you afraid to try it? If it was on my house, I'd probably try it, but I don't want to go to a, a client's house put this in and have that fail. And now what's that make me look like when I have to come back and redo it again? Unless I told him up front, Hey, I'm going to try this new product. If it doesn't work, I'll come back and fix it. I could, I guess I could say it that way, but I'm just going to go with what's tried and true and then set it in there. Cause it's, I know it's not going anywhere. Is it less expensive? Uh, yeah, it's know. a little bit. It's actually only a little bit less expensive because it's not like a dollar a roll, you know, it could be $25 a roll and your thin set costs you less than that. You only need the one. Is it more for a do? It, is it more for a do-it-yourselfer? I think so, because nobody likes to have a do-it-yourselfer with you know the outlets in the wall uh, going along there with a steel trowel. They're afraid they're going to get electrocuted or something. Uh, so you just cut around all that, and it's just a simple process. And I think it's going to be faster too. Yeah, I would think so. And the nice thing is too, though, is like you know if you're using all the stainless and glass mix, you know, yep. tile that's out there now. And you use thin set and you push, you got a little too much on the wall, you push it in and it bleeds out. Now you're standing there with a nail scraping out every grout joint so that you can get grout mm -hmm. in it. Where this, you just stick it to the wall and get all the way around the kitchen and I can go and grout. Oh, it. Yeah. Is it just so for a backsplash? It, no, actually it says suitable for wet locations, but I'll go with Ron on this one. I ain't doing it. <laughs> That's why I keep saying, I'll try it, you know, kitchen backsplash, decorative tile in a, in a dining room. You know, we do a lot of that. Uh -huh. We get dining room hutch and you put a little glass on the wall or something like that. I'm right. not going to worry about it there. No, I'm not using it in a wet location. Yeah. Might work. So, like he says, I'm not a guinea pig either. No, <laughs> no. There you go. And the last so, one I had on her was epoxy based, but I don't know. We don't really use a whole lot of epoxy based setting materials. I think most of them are still going to be water-based the epoxy more in the yeah. grout which we'll get to that one too yep oh look yep. grouts okay go ahead so, okay. on to the grouts yeah so why don't you talk about the grouts i've been rambling okay so we got uh well we've we've basically you've got two standard types of grout that, that you're going to see sanded and unsanded uh your unsanded is for the joints when you've got when you're using marble or something that's gonna scratch real easy you want to set those tile close together and then you're going to use an unsanded grout. If you use sanded grout on a marble or a granite, any polished surface, it's going to leave scratches all over that tile. And then you're going to have to polish it once it's done. And it's a lot easier to just use unsanded grout than to call in a, a stone guy and have them polish all your, all your tile because it's scratched up. Yes, Robbie? Didn't you always say it had to do with the, the distance? The gap between the tile? Yeah. Correct. It does. Yeah, so it's going to be an eighth of an inch or smaller. You're going to use unsanded grout. If it's over that, then you're going to use sanded grout. And the sand, all that does is just fill that gap. Because if you put unsanded grout in a large gap, it just shrinks up. And then you've got to do it two or three times to get it filled. Um, so that's that why you can make it flake grout. off down the road, too. So correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Correct. So, um, so when you're setting large formatted tile, and you're and especially if it's marble, you want to make sure that it's rectified so that that way, it, you know, it's all going to line up. It's going to be straight. 
unrectified tile is going to have uh, variances in it, and it's not going to be very straight. So you're going to have to be careful when you're selecting your tile to make sure that it's rectified so that you can set that type together. Um, and most marbles are rectified, aren't they? Yeah, and what rectified is is when they recut it so that they know it's square. Um, if it's not rectified, so remember that we'll go into this next week when we talk about installation. We'll talk more about the little things you use for gapping everything, the little T's and crosses and the little things, and then the flat lines, which I love for large format tiles now. Um, so we'll get into all that next week, and I think that'll become clearer. But for just for okay. now, if you're looking to grout, like you said, the eighth inch or less, definitely an unsanded, and anything quarter, you know, eighth inch or more, or three sixteenths and larger, definitely a sanded grout. Um, for glass tiles now, they make glass grout, which is yes. really kind of nice. It's more of a clear base with some shinier colors mixed in, almost like a glitter. Um, because one thing you might not realize, if you buy glass tile and you, like, say it's bought this clear glass tile that's really pretty and, and, and nice and reflective. If you use black grout, that tile will die. It just, because you filled all the edges in with black, it changes the color of the tile. It just doesn't reflect or refract light from the side. So the glass grout right. will allow light to penetrate the sides of the tile and bring it back to life. So a lot of things to consider when you're getting to the install and your, your design portion of it. So a good, good tile installer or a good store will be able to help you out on that one. Exactly. But they're not trying and to then, upsell you with glass grout. It does make a difference. <laughs> Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make that glass pop, which is why you're using the glass in the first place. You're using it as an accent to, to bring attention to it. So if you did, like uh, Rich said, use a black or a dark gray, it's going to make that glass go dull and you're, you're losing the effect of having the whole glass tile in the first place. Exactly. Yep. So, and then the last one is the epoxy. And yeah. if you're going to use epoxy, <laughs> be go skilled. ahead, Rich. Yeah, be skilled, be quick. <laughs> So the epoxy yeah. takes is much harder to clean off. So you cannot do when it says do an area about a foot, one foot by one foot. They're not kidding. Don't yes. get greedy and try to do three foot by one foot because you will not get it all off. And then you're it's just brutal. So I don't know anybody right. that really uses it or there's a huge ups charge because they know this could go south really quick. Right. The, the advantage to the epoxy grouts is that they, they don't stain. They're not going to absorb mm -hmm. any any moisture. Uh, they help bond the tile together. There's a lot of good advantages to it, but you need to know how to work with it and and understand what you're doing. And do if you're grouting, you're doing one small area cleanup, one small area and cleanup. You're not right. going to go do, grout the whole floor or the whole wall and then come back and wash it off. It's just it's not going to come off. Right. So it bonds. It does. It does what exactly it does. It, it, it to does do. exactly what you'd expect an epoxy to do. Right. So. Okay, so we've talked about you know some of our backer materials. We've talked about some waterproof, uh, some setting materials in our grouts. Let's talk about waterproofing that. So this might be a little out of order, I guess. Once we had the Dura Rock up, we should have done some waterproofing. But uh, that's okay. What you've got there. So that looks like the Schluter. Uh, it's not Dietra. It's the other Curdy. I can almost Curdy. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go this way so you can see the name right there. There it is, Curdy. So again, that is a and, waterproofing membrane. So I guess technically, if you put that over your drywall, you'd be good. But I still don't like using drywall. Honestly, when we we've been to the Curdy classes, and they they prefer you use a half inch or five inch drywall, regular drywall. You can use the green board if you want. They do not want to put over a dura rock, which is the way we used right. to do it, and and it because it just doesn't bond to the dura rock nearly sure. as well. It bonds to the drywall really well. Now our drywaller has one less step he just drywalls the whole bathroom he, he's in and out he's not worried about cutting in the uh the dura rock so it, it works out really well and then you just use this and this goes up like wallpaper and you're using your thin set as a wallpaper glue basically and it just you just put this up and once this is up you can water test your shower base you don't even need mm -hmm. to tile it. It's ready to go. You can you can go right there and uh, and be done with it. It'll it it waterproofs the the whole shower system. Okay, so that's your that's your membrane. So now one of the mod, the other systems like what I'll do is I'll put up the Dura Rock. <clears throat> I like Dura Rock. I'll put that all up. Curdy actually sells four inch rolls. So yes. I will actually mud up my corners, mud up my seams, and I will run the Curdy in strips, and I will flash my pan with it. 
And then I use a roll-on waterproofing membrane. It just comes in gallons and you just roll it over the, the like, whole thing. So the one product that, uh, that we've used, it's the like blue. red dot or something like that. There's a red and there's a blue and there's a black. I mean, they're all different manufacturers again, but you just right. roll it on, I let it cure. Of that. Don't we, don't we there have a fuzzy? Do we have a picture of that? It's a, uh, it's like a red shower base. I thought, I thought it, there it yeah. is. That's it. So but you can, can do all your corners and your dam and all that. And then you just roll that stuff on there and you're, pretty much watertight. So instead of putting the curdy on, you put this on? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to use the Dura Rock or you're, you're required to use it, again, curdy is a great product. All the Schluter products are. They're just damn expensive. So damn depending German. on where you're building, yeah, it depends on where you're building. You know, if it's your house and you can't afford $1,000 for shower prep, you know, because yep. you want to buy nicer tile, then you can do the Dura Rock and the curdy strips and a roll-on waterproofing. So you just got to balance everything. In other words, there's no only, there isn't only one way to do this. No, we've, we've never had a leak with this stuff. And that that's, I, I stick with it for that reason too. So, never but I've never tried shower either. Dot, you know so. what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. it works. The red dot is exactly what um, we had mastic over. And that's how I know mastic doesn't stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Got some water behind that tile, and boy, did they come off real easy. Just scrape yeah, them off. There you go. Tuck them back on with some thin set. So yeah, that was uh -huh. always a good one. All right, um, Fuzzy. It's it's this is coming on you. You're gonna have to join the show now, buddy. You ready? We got the rundown of all the different tiles, and we've got pictures of some of this stuff so that you can actually see what we're talking about. And what would that be there, Robbie? What Ceramic. kind of tile? All right. Good job. Look at nice. that. It could be porcelain. You don't know. You don't know if that was marble. You don't know what that was, but you got it right. It is a ceramic. No, tile. the reason why she, I would think, well, I don't know if she'd realize that, but I would consider that ceramic because of the pillowed edge and the wide gap. Porcelain would be set tighter and usually have a square edge, but nice call, Robbie. Thank you. Yeah. See, you've learned something over the past 14 years, you know, doing this with us. Or it's the blind squirrel finds a nut thing. <laughs> Hey. I, it could be that too. Who knows? Could be that. I yeah, don't fourteen. Know. Sorry, Robbie. Just, just think of all the time you've wasted with Rich and I. And you know, I wonder why I'm on this now, to tell you the truth. But that's okay. And ask questions and guess answers. <laughs> yeah, because right. I know people are watching this, going, "What is with that head in the TV? She's not doing anything, and she's always <laughs> looking the wrong way." Because she can't figure out how to look at her camera to look at the right person. So I, I'm sorry for all you people who are playing the drinking game. Whenever she looks the wrong way, drink. Oh, there you, there you go. go. There you go. Okay, so, so okay, we, had, Rich. we had we had ceramic <laughs> tile up there first. Is, is that what you, you were showing there, Fuzzy? It was. I'm working on the other pictures. Oh, she got it right on. and broke it. What she happened? Let's buy him some time. See that wall tile in the bathroom we're in? Yes, right there. Yes. Look at I'm dancing with myself. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there are storms I coming from dance, like, they're coming from this side today. <laughs> So while he's finding a tile thing in shower stalls now, is the style to do the walls and the ceiling and the floor all the same? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, wondering what Ron's going to do in my bathroom. <laughs> We're going to do all the same color. And yet, well, and, but you don't want to generally, you're not going to use a larger formatted tile on a floor, although you can. You just there's and and I'm sure we're going to get into this more next week is the uh, the slip coefficient. Skid coefficient, right? So if you use smaller tiles on a shower floor, that will um, give you some traction when you're standing on it. That because of all the little grout lines. Can you use a large formatted tile and just use big tile in there? Sure, but it, it's going to tend to be slipperier. So that's I why did. you you, you got to watch the slip coefficient of the tile. And, and make sure that you're using the right stuff on the floor. And that goes for any floor in the kitchen, a mud room, bathroom, right. um, you know, outside patio. 
you know, that's all when that's... you put those little suction cup, little flowers and stuff on your. Oh yeah, floor. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Time the up. little the yellow daisies. Subway tile. That, there you oh, go. That is a subway tile, but um, what what is that fuzzy? What's it say? That, that is. Ceramic. That's still ceramic. Ceramic title, uh, Catalina. There you go. But you can see now how uneven that is. And that's that's one of the reasons I picked this picture out. It, it's not, it's almost like it's a hand, handmade tile. And they put them in forms and they, then they, and they go ahead and cook them. And they put the glazing on them to make them look like that. So they're actually designed that way. That's not a rectified tile. You can see how the grout lines are messed up. If you're not really good at setting tile, this is a great option because you can't mix it up. You can't mess it up. For well, somebody that's is, a perfectionist like Rich, this would drive him nuts to try and no, set No, actually, I've done a number of showers using plain subway tile. One of the things I love about subway tiles is so inexpensive. You could probably buy that in most yeah. places for $1.89 a square foot. Might even get yep. on sale for less. So what that picture yep. you had up there, and we'll get some pictures together. That's called a common bond, just like a normal uh -huh. brick wall, right? You split them in half, right? So that's your common bond. But you can actually right. do a stack bond. You can do a header course. You can, you know, there's a number of different ways to lay that. So you can do three different patterns in your shower wall with a cheap tile like that, and it'll look awesome. Yes. So, yeah. You could you could stack them soldier course. Or you could do a soldier course through there yep. and have a lot of fun with that tile. But again, that's ceramic, and that's just a ceramic coating on a clay fired. Uh, piece mm -hmm. of uh, tile so it's not that same color all the way through um, you can chip it and you know that and it scratches uh, a little more easily than than some of the other stuff well which um, also means it's easier to, to to cut than porcelain so. oh yeah <laughs> porcelains are brutal to cut yes they are yeah. so, so uh that, give us the next picture there fuzzy oh that, that's that yeah that's your white cordero marble uh, 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 nope, that is actually a large formatted porcelain. That's how good the porcelain tile is becoming. Oh, it looks like marble. I know. I know. That I is, know. So, I know. It looks way too slippery. It is It is a shiny tile, but you're going you're gonna to look at the slip coefficient on that tile box before you start to set that. I'm going to say that, never. It's a living room. <laughs> It's a little and Robbie, you right. Yes. And and we use those products. I have a house right now that's being laid with four foot by five foot pieces. And it's only a quarter inch thick. And they're doing and a pattern in the porcelain. floor. And it's porcelain. And it's a porcelain tile, correct? Yes. And they make that up to five foot by ten foot. Yes. It, it, so they're big it's, slabs. Too slippery. Yes. No, uh, I should be surprised. I, I don't think so. Not as bad as you would nope. think. That looks a lot shinier than than that, but it, as Ron said when I said marble at first, they've gone to high uh, high dense or was it the uh, high definition printers? So remember, mm -hmm. you used to buy tile that looked like marble, and you could see all the dots from the dot matrix printer. Well, now right. they've got these high definition printers uh, that you can't even tell it's not real when you're looking, no. you know, a foot away from the stone. And actually, Wilson Art went that route with even for mica they've got for Mike out there now that is just simply amazing because of high definition printers. So. Right. And the reason I picked that picture was because mm -hmm. people say, Oh, I want real marble. I, I don't like the, the look of a porcelain, a fake marble. I want something that's, that's gonna, uh, I want real marble. The problem with real marble is it stains. Porous. Um, it it's porous. This porcelain tile, you can't stain it. You can't scratch it. I mean, it, it is, it is extremely durable. And for a floor, I don't think you can come up with a better product, you know, if you're going to tile. Mm -hmm. Ceramic scratches, porcelain tile is not going to scratch. It's going to take the abuse. Um, and it's that same color all the way through. So it's uh, it's really good, solid product. Give us the next uh, picture there, Fuzzy. There, ah, so there's funny. another porcelain tile, like you were saying, the printed. Mm -hmm. Rich? That's, so that's now what that's I'm standing on. That's almost identical. So it's a wide plank porcelain tile with a wood look. Yes. And again, that's just printed on there and, mm -hmm. and it's printed into the tile. It's still a porcelain tile. Um, and I, pretty much everybody I talk to, I go look at the porcelain stuff first. 
It's less yeah. expensive than your stone, um, and, and it's just it's just really a good solid option. Well, so, and for me down uh, what do here and for FLA, for yeah. down here in FLA, I don't want to use wood floors, even engineered, because of the amount of humidity and termites and everything else. I will always try to talk people into this. You know, I'd yes. rather have an area rug and a runner or something, but no real wood. That is just yep. that is a nice looking floor. Yep. It's a good solid floor. And again, it's extremely durable. So uh, showers with it. sedimentary stones. What what does that include there, Rich? Well, sedimentary is going to be a real soft stone. So you're going to have anything from like shale uh, to limestone. Uh, those are all considered sedimentary stones. So they're they're all, you know, mined like like granite or like marble. Mm -hmm. But because they're sedimentary, they're extremely soft, uh, easy to chip, easy to break, uh, easy to work with, easy. You know, they yeah. will stain, so they do need to seal them. So they're they're more la laborious. Um, but there's a yes. lot of nice slates out there that are really good, and you know, blue stone's a nice floor for like an outdoor area, uh, and that's sedimentary. So it's just a, a softer stone. All right, give us the next picture there, Fuzzy. Keep going. Next one. I don't know. There you go. There you go. That's there you go. That's so a that's, slate. There we... So that's a slate, and then you know, I I like this picture because half of it's been sealed, mm -hmm. and it gives you the it brings out the color in there. Or you can or you can go with an unsealed, which is on the right side, and in there, you can see it's a flatter, duller color. But um, you know, depending on what you're looking, it's the same tile on both sides. That just shows you the difference from the slate going from one side to the other when you put your sealers on there. So, so this is what I see in a lot of bathrooms, that kind of look, like showers. Uh -huh. Yep. But yeah. the one that has looks like it has a yellow stripe through it. Uh huh. Yeah. It's just it's the same stuff. It's just a different color pattern. Well, it's coming from a different part in the, of the mountain. So yep. if your tile layer is paying attention, he probably shouldn't have laid that one because we would say <laughs> that's out of range. Thank yeah. you. Everything else is rust to green. So, right. you know, that's one of the bonds you take out of the box and go, yeah, I don't think so. So Thank you. that's just pass. So the other thing yeah. too, is the, the, both sides of that, the side on the, the, the one side that is all that you can see all the colors, um, that could be an enhancing sealer, which will mm -hmm. bring out all those colors. The other side, if you use a regular sealer, it will dry and look just like that. Right. So, you know, you have to use an enhancing sealer to get all those colors to come out. Now, the one thing I always warn people, if you're not sure if you like it, wet the floor first, because once you do enhancing sealer, you can't go back to the dull. You, know, you right. can put enhancing sealer over regular sealer, but you can't f fix the other one without grinding. So make sure you know what you want to do before you do it. Right. And I, I tell clients, uh, any of the marbles, the granites, the, the slate, any of these types of natural stones, if you're going to put them in a shower, uh, you're, you're going to have a lot more maintenance. And because that stone is going to absorb the moisture in the shower. And over time, we've had situations where mold and mildew actually grew in the pores of the stone. So you're in there with a steam cleaner trying to clean it out and it stains the, the, the stone. So try not to use that stuff in a, in a shower or a steam unit or someplace like that. So what is the best to use in a shower or a steam unit? Well, the way technology has changed. We'll go to the porcelain. You know, and buy we've and get something that's that. got that on it. Right. So back in the day, I remember when Corian was really popular, everybody had Corian countertops. Well, we went to Corian panels for showers. You know, that yep. was probably the second biggest seller for Corian was the quarter inch panels for showers because you couldn't stain them, couldn't hurt them. Problem they ran into is they look like Corian. So they didn't have a lot <laughs> of boring. they didn't have a lot of pop. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, what, right. what my my cream shower. So, right. no, but even Corian's changed and all of them, I should say, and all the man-made products have changed a lot and you can still get some of that. So not really beating yeah. them again. So right. next one would be like metamorphic stones. And this one will never go away because I don't know if you remember this, Ron, but we were doing a, a presentation at the Restore in Elgin yeah. and I said sedimentary stone. And then I don't remember what word I used for marbles. Uh, and then I said, you know, granite is a volcanic and this woman chirped in and she goes, no, marble's metamorphic. It's not sedimentary. It's not, you know, transition, whatever. So metamorphic, which means it started out sedimentary, just like 
limestone, but or it's right. been around longer under more heat and pressure. So marble is very hard compared to limestone and slate, but it's nowhere near as hard as granite and granite is volcanic. So anything comes from volcano, it's hard to hurt. So the granite is good for countertops, floors, you know, but again, you can get porcelain now that looks like almost all of them. Right. So that Bingo last picture, that, that, that one right there, that is still, that's a soapstone. So that's mm -hmm. still in the sedimentary yep. and go to the next one there, uh, fuzzy. There you go. So now you're getting into the marbles and mm -hmm. that is a tumbled Prima marble Marfa? floor. Mm -hmm. uh, go like to the Prima next Marfa. one. That's tumbled limestone. Tumbled oh. limestone. Okay. Yep. Go, go ahead. Next one. What do you got there? This is uh, Carrara Marble Effect Porcelain Tiles. There you go. Yep. So that's what okay. we're saying. I mean, it, there's so much available out there. Keep going. We'll scroll through. We'll get through this. There you uh, go. Granite. There's my favorite granite right there. <laughs> Would that be the blue, what do you call that one? Blue. Blue pearl. Blue pearl. It looks yes. like my kitchen counter. Uh-huh. It's is a, that what you I like in it. as you walk by you get these flashes of blue it's uh it's very very nice to, uh granite and uh go ahead with the granite there rich no i mean granite's all volcanic base so it's you know it's all made in a one-shot thing from an eruption basically right mm -hmm. i mean magma comes up through it picks up certain minerals and things in the ground uh and other chemicals and then when it hardens in the mountain sits around for you know a couple three million years you've got uh -huh. some pretty interesting colors and the one thing is the variation so like blue pearl green pearl uh those typically run very uh much the same all the way through the mountain but you get some that you know like green marbles with white veining just it varies so much by where you are in the mountain that you can't match it so right go ahead hit the next one there fuzzy There you go, like that. And right, you can so see it's got all veining. Yep. And that's what I like. I like a stone that has a lot of character, especially for a larger countertop or an island, because that veining really gives a character. Also shows doesn't show dirt, but helps there. Right. So you got nice veining, nice movement in the stone, and it mm -hmm. you know it depends on what you're you're putting the stone on, you know, the granite wise, anyway. So. And, and it yeah. kind of, you, you got to figure out what you want to do and look at all the different ones. If you go out and you actually go to your granite supplier, your tile supplier, and you can actually look and see what you're right. doing. And when you're ordering all the stone, you want to make sure that when you order it, it's all coming from the same lot so that you're getting the same color variations. If you get some from different lots, all of a sudden you're going to get a cut from another part of the mountain and it's just not going to match. Exactly. So that's I went to get from having a Corian counter like that cream to having uh -huh. that marble counter that looked like that picture. I cannot tell if it's dirty. <laughs> right. I well, never have thing. to wash my counters because well, you do, but it just doesn't show as bad. You can't see anything. I mean, right. you'll touch it and go, oh, there's something sticky there or wet there. You uh -huh. have no idea when you look at it, it looks perfectly clean. That's good. That means Don I don't has know to how to clean, clean or Yeah, because Don, I'm sure he cleans it all the time. That's why yeah. you don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, so I think uh, we'll call it right here at this point, unless you got something else to touch on there, Rich. No, I think next no, week I we'll hit next a little more detail on layout and setting, layout you know, some tools setting. and how to lay out yep. and so on. And Yep. That's Especially tools, background. layout, installation. Uh, some cleaners and that kind of stuff is what'll be part two of setting the tile and, uh, and setting your marble and doing the proper selection of your tile installation. So, um, with that, um, you know, if you ever want to just click on the like button and I'm sure there's like a bell somewhere or some other thing that will actually, when you hit the subscribe button, it'll notify you when we hit the air like. and right there. So make sure you hit that like. subscribe button. And that way you'll be notified when we uh, come back on. Like right where Robbie's pointing, right, right about there. Yes. There, there you go. Yes. So, uh, and you can also check out all of our previous uh, podcasts. Just go to mightyhouse.net. 
You can also find us on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and on HomeApprovementUSA.com. And find links to all of them, again, at MightyHouse.net. And uh, this video gets posted up there. All the videos are listed. All the uh, podcasts are listed under Mighty House On Demand. So just look at the On Demand page, and we'll get you squared away. So, yes, Fuzzy? Fuzzy, are you still there? Oh, yeah. (laughs) There he goes. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so next week will be part two of uh, tile layout and installation. For Fuzzy Robbie, uh, Robbie, Rich Cowgill, I'm Ron Cowgill. Keep it square and level. Until next, Until next time. time. Until next time. There you go. Take us away, Fuzzy. Fuzzy.